Hello, I am Tato Cat. Well, welcome to my channel. Today we are playing the letter. Previously, we uh, fell into the arms of our clients. Decided to keep working on the house where we really should have. I had a creepy dream about our ex lover and the person who looks like our ex lover. And uh, now we're in the kitchen with Hansi moving stuff. We'll see how that ends up. Also, I apologize for the hiatus. I'm in the, currently in the middle of a move. So things aren't going as consistently as I'd like them to. Also, my voice is a little congested. Like every time we go on hiatus, I come back with a the sniffles or something. Anyways, let us continue. The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Don't! I half expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder! Maybe you should be randomly touching people. Just a thought. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. I don't necessarily think it's a volume, but more of the pitch that breaks glass, but whatever. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again! Ever! I don't like being scared, so I don't believe in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on the top of the list of things Arian likes. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach, or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? I mean, it's a creepy house, so why not? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Gurium? The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there, though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. But neither of them spoke, even as Johannes leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there! The ghosts are going to get you! Those are just the names he thought of off the top of his head. Timmy and Billy. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. That would be a relief. Actually, those rumors of the place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing a dead person, isn't exactly a sim the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there would be such things such as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be seen. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around trying to kill people. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? Probably not. At least not that he'd admit to. A simple enough question on the surface, yet I noticed the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. Ooh. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently. And in his eyes, I see something dangerous. 
It depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Did they hire the priest to bless the house or something? Well, maybe that, but no strange people? You're gonna say we're strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women lurking about then? A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. None that I know of. But I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it. Immediately. Mm, is he talking about Rochelle? I think that goes without saying. The concern he has. I'm oh, sorry, the concern. He have on the top of security. That's it's quickly gone. That sentence is a odd one. The concern he have on the top of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns if a bit subdued. Whatever sparmy remark or innuendo he has at the ready never comes through as voices from the dining hall ring out. So, is this a full time job for you then? Nah, I just do like mostly uh, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So, you can't really call it a full time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least not all the time. That would be the magazine photographer, I presume. As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheerful and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. Sounds like it's working on the photographer, too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least, if his small scowl is anything to go by. Is he jealous? Try to lighten the mood. Ask if he's alright. I don't know how to go about this one. I feel like Marion is not the best at lightening the mood. Ask if he's hey, on. are you all right there, Whiskey? You're looking like you need a serious drink. Well, at least he likes us better now. What is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries, mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. I'm fine. Just a bit winded from all that moving about. It's been a long day. And the day's not over yet. So if you can excuse the bloodness, you either shape up to help or ship out back to your room and let us do the rest of the work. He hesitates, eyes locked firmly on the door that lead that led to the dining hall. Even now we can still hear as Mrs. Wright and the photographer to chat in between shots. It's not my place to say this, but she really does seem to care a lot about you, you know? There's no need to remind me of that. 
A strange smile appears on his face before he shuts his eyes and sighs. Tell the workers that you're all dismissed early. That's nice and all, whiskey. But we really shouldn't just take off. Delays aren't a good thing when it comes to big projects like these. The sooner we tackle certain issues, the better. And I trust you can take care of these issues another day. Don't make me ask again, Mint. Just tell the others they can go home early. And to not worry, they'll still get paid the remaining hours. I don't know what prompted this. The air he's putting on, though? I know better than to meddle in proud in proud further. Besides, fine, you're the boss. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go while under his roof. This is right, and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation. Notice even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Going to the foyer has me tumble upon the family butler once more. He raises a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I really want to know his story. Like, out of all the characters, he's not even a character that gets his story. But I want to know his story. I don't doubt it. Do not update it? Okay. Cheer it up. Cheer it up. Er, uh, this is it. To keep her mind off the things that haunted her, Mary and McCullough focused on assisting the rights during their move-in. Later that afternoon, she was seen chatting with Luke Wright, who then demanded she and the rest of the crew take an early leave. Hmm. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there were some difficulties at first because the driver didn't know where the Ermengarde mansion is. He tried to have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about, and the butler didn't understand. And as soon as we told him it's a haunted mansion over in Ansem Village, he knew just the place. And finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. He gives me the willies too. I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the as though the curse to me, it blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One has somehow bothered me greatly, more than my, my exasperation over whiskey in this project, or wanting all of it to stop, has been no rain whispering over my ears today. Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn new Uthriel. What? Uh, Uruthi? Uh, yeah, I'm not. I give up. Loose ends. 
fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want to a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke. And Wednesdays, improv. Usually it's these four guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. But I love a good laugh. Stand-up comedy is what I think. And I thought Cam or Harana or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! I need you for something! It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. I probably have been kicked out of other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and shake and the shake of his head, even when he's attending to other customers, just like that. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. And some Asian guy, and I'm pretty sure I've seen him here before a couple of times. Well, he never talks to anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him, too. But he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. Asian Joe. What? What? Why? Why? All right, all right. What is it? Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, pour the wine. I hope he doesn't. Uh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counters. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because the little since I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from a sober man. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head. Just like I know he would. We're going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home or just gone to sleep on the bar freight dinner and then. I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. Not the Illuminati. They're behind everything. I knew it. They made this game, didn't they? So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Deal in Dosh? What's a Dosh? Who are you looking into this time? The talk would have interested me, would have kept my attention, if I gave a damn. At my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds. 
that is the pub. And would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned, if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a water cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. It does sometimes. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck. Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Oh, Marion. Private conversation here, lady. Yeah, but she knows stuff about him. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy... He starts to look... ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes. She's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't you? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> Unlike Shorty over here. Arian is a very interesting joke. What's it that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I moved directly behind him and used the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I pop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. <laughs> oh. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. He's the popo. <laughs> you wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead, and then he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. 
I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. Yeah, I kind of regret not doing that. And I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke is a catch too. They both are. But I really cannot, for the love of all things holy, see how they even worked out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being pe pe peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. Yeah, itchy. I giggle. I giggle bubbles up, and I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight. Just because. Just because. It's because you're drunk. It's not just because. It's because you're gonna probably pass out. Eventually, cracking when I open, just in case if I fall asleep. So ho. Is it Hannah? Did she pay Oops. you to look if he's been cheating or some such? My bad. So Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Mm, no, he's not. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? He almost did. Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? Is, are we going to say something really embarrassing, like super sexy or something like that? How is she or how is she? Well and good. So the answer is yes. Yes. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexiest sin to boot. Too much info. Not a private detective then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if THE Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, pants. I'd take the pants off of... <laughs> it gets worse. Ah. Here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I have been right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave? You what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This'll be dismissed and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Well... This whole situation is a fucking train wreck. <laughs> you go to a bar, get smashed, that's our goal, to get smashed and then not think about Luke Wright, only to have some guy mention Luke Wright, and then we told Hannah that we wouldn't gossip, only to gossip, and G here won't give us more alcohol, and now he's trying to pass us off to this police officer, and now he's asking us more questions about Luke, and we're trying to give him answers, but it's nothing because we're too drunk. Now he's mad, and we're drunk. <laughs> and then the bartender's mad. It's just bad. <laughs> Maybe it's a bad time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. The feelings had a taste. It'd be bitter than fear and pull off. And it's getting me thinking. Though thinking doesn't get me far with too much shite in my system. 
You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion... There's something going on in that place. Something, something... <sighs> okay, well, in this episode here, we will see, uh... Where this conversation goes with Drunk Marian. In the next episode, if you haven't already liked, comment, subscribe, I am Tater Cat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.